Hello everyone, I am Anjali Arora and today in this video we are going to discuss some more important concepts of magnetostatics. This is the second video in this series in which we are going to discuss the important concepts of magnetostatics and this series will be going on for the upcoming days as well as we will try to cover up most of the topics. These videos will be helpful for the CSIR net physics exam, gate physics exam, GEST exam, TIFR exam, IIT JAM, NEET exam as well and even in, for any other similar exams these videos will be helpful for all the students to cover up the most important topics and the points from the EMT portion. Now let's talk about the points which we will cover up in this video today but before that if you are new on this channel that is mission net physics exam then guys you can subscribe this channel click on the bell icon too so that you will get the notifications for the new videos which I will upload on this channel along with that if you will like this video you will find it helpful you can even share it with all your friends so that it will even help them to prepare the electromagnetic theory. Now let's just start the discussion. So guys in the last class we have talked about all these important points. I'm just quickly gonna show you. We have started the magnetostatics. There was some introduction part. Then we have talked about the magnetic force. Then we have talked about the uh, work done and we have reached to a conclusion there. Okay so that much part has been done in the previous video. If you have not checked it, you have not watched it till now, you can watch that video too. Okay. Now let's talk about the discussion which we will do in this session today. So guys, as we all know, if there is a charged particle having the charge Q, okay, and it is moving with velocity V in the presence of magnetic field B, clear? So in the magnetic field B, this charged particle is moving with the velocity V. What will be the force acting on the particle? That will be Lorentz force which is Q V cross B, okay? Now, in this case, if I will write the magnitude of force, then what it will be? It will be QVB sin theta. I don't need to write the vector as I am considering the magnitude of force here. And also guys, what is this theta here? The theta is the angle between V and B. Clear? So that is the angle theta which will be between velocity direction of motion as well as the magnetic field. Clear? Now, next point. If we are going to talk about the another thing, okay, or here guys, don't get confused about this theta. It is just simply the angle between what V and B. I hope that is clear to every one of you. Sometimes students get confused about this angle, but there is no such point of confusion as we normally find the cross product of two vectors. That's what we are doing here and that's how we are going to write the final expression for the magnitude of force. Now, as in this video, we are mainly going to cover up the important trajectories, which means if there will be a particular angle theta uh, between V and B, so what kind of path the particle will trace, okay, or what kind of trajectory you will get. So that's the discussion we will do in this video today. See, if theta will be 0 or pi, 0 or pi means 0 means when both V and B are in the same direction because these are vector quantities. Okay, vector quantities means what? They will have direction as well as they will have magnitude. So if I'm going to talk about the direction of these vectors, they will be in the same direction, both V and B, and we will say theta between them, the angle between them is what? Zero degrees. So when it is zero, when you will put zero here, that's going to be QVB sine zero. Sine zero is what? That's going to be zero. So what is the force acting in this case on the particle? That will be zero. But if the theta is pi, which means the angle between V and B is equal to what? 180 degrees. How it will be 180 degrees? When direction of V and B vectors will be opposite to each other. Okay, for both the vectors. So 180 degrees sine 180 degrees also what? That will be zero. So force again the magnitude of force you will get zero. What we mean by the force equal to zero? In this case guys you will say that there is no force acting on the particle or the particle is gonna remain or the charge will move. Okay, how? Undeflected because no force will be acting on it. So it will not deflect from its path. Okay, it will remain undeflected. Another thing, you can even say it will be 
uh, moving in a straight line so this is another way of saying this that the particle is moving undeflected which means if particle is going in this direction it, it will keep on going like that in the straight line okay so the point is either say the particle is going to move undeflected or in a straight line both are correct but again the angle between b and b can even be uh, 90 degrees or 3 pi by 2 you can say okay pi is 180 degrees here so 3 into 180 upon 2 either it will be pi by 2 which means 90 or 3 pi by 2 you can just find it as well clear now in this case what will happen in this case guys what kind of path you will get which will be followed by the particle or what kind of motion particle will do so to know about it you just need to do one thing at place of theta you just need to put pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 in this expression of magnitude of force and after that you will get just simply by putting pi by 2 here you will get qvb because sine pi by 2 or sine 90 degrees is equal to what 1 so now after getting that what this expression is telling us okay because qvb all the three terms are there now the point is it is gonna tell us that the particle okay or the charged particle will follow a circular path and will also rotate will follow a circular path and will also rotate in a plane which is perpendicular to the magnetic field clear so these are the two motions the particle will do right now what kind of motion it is doing it is following a circular path as well as it is rotating in the plane which is perpendicular to magnetic field clear when the theta was what theta was pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 so this should be clear to all of us and the type of motion which is it is gonna follow right now is known as cyclotron motion okay such type of motion is known as cyclotron motion now the third condition we will talk about that when theta is neither equal to 0 degrees nor it's 180 or we can say we will not have the theta value pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. So in that case if there is any other theta value then what will happen what kind of trajectory or the path it will follow we will talk about that but before talking about the third case we are going to talk about some of the important formula here okay. So let's talk about it see. In this case, how many forces will be acting on the particle when we have talked about theta is equal to pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2, we have observed that in these cases, the particle will be doing the circular motion as well as it will be rotating in the plane perpendicular to the magnetic field. Now there will be two forces acting on the particle. The first one will be the Lorentz force which is Q V cross B, we have already talked about it and the another one will be the centripetal force. So what is the Lorentz force magnitude that will be QVB sine theta but theta is equal to 90 degrees so in that case we will just have its magnitude QVB okay because sine 90 is equal to 1 and the centripetal force is mv square upon r clear because it is also doing the circular motion done so in this case what's going to happen you will get the value of v after simplifying it v is here v square is here just simplify the expression arrange the terms you will get v is equal to qbr upon m now this is going to be related to cyclotron motion of the particle okay so overall we have talked about it and the formula which we will consider now will be very important okay and you can even get the questions based on these formula from emt portion or we can say even from the different subjects you can have the questions based on these formulae so you need to focus on them clear now next thing we all know momentum is equal to what mass into velocity so you know about the v value just put it here in the mv expression and you will get qbr clear and what is this this is the momentum if i'm going to talk about the angular velocity okay so what it will be or angular frequency you can say it's gonna be 2 pi nu okay angular frequency what it will be it will be 2 pi nu nu is the general frequency which is 1 upon time period so what it will be 2 pi upon t okay 1 upon time period now t is equal to what t you know velocity is equal to distance upon time so time is equal to distance for the circular path circumference is the distance covered which will be 2 pi r where r is the radius of that circular path upon v, v is the velocity with which the particle is moving. So in this case you can put the t value you will get 2 pi r upon v okay like here in the denominator you need to put it. Now when you will simplify the things you are going to get v upon r from here done. 
and now you already know about the v value what is that qbr upon m so just put that v value here qbr upon m rr will get cancelled out you will just get qb upon m which is again a very important expression next point if you just want to get the frequency frequency I have shown with mu or f okay anything you can take there now f is equal to what one upon time period so either you can write it in that way one upon time period but right now since you have got omega so omega upon 2 pi is also what frequency you will have so this upon 2 pi will be frequency that is qb upon 2 pi m and t is equal to 1 upon f which will give you 2 pi m upon qb what it is representing what is this time period this time period is the required time by the particle to complete one rotation of the circle okay so to complete the one rotation of the circle or to complete that one round how much time is needed that is gonna be the t is equal to 2 pi m upon qb clear if i'm gonna talk about the next point guys that is the third case in the third case theta is not equal to 0 pi pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 all these theta values we have mentioned here which we have taken in the previous cases so if theta is not equal to these values then what will happen so we are going to take an example here which will have theta is equal to 45 degrees okay when theta is equal to 45 degrees in this case what will happen see i'm going to show you the velocity component for example this is the velocity vector then along this axis and along this axis what will be the components of velocity and let's say because theta is the angle between v and b we are taking so v in this direction b in this direction the angle between v and b is equal to 45 degrees as i have shown it here now next thing what will be the x-axis or this axis component we will have for the v velocity so it will be v sine 45 degrees because angle has been made along the vertical axis not the horizontal axis so this is the perpendicular component of the velocity so which will be v sine 45 degrees while if i will talk about this component it is the tangential component of the velocity okay and what it will be v cos 45 degrees because along with this axis the angle has been made so this is the v cos 45 degrees component we will have okay and shown the magnetic field in this direction and what is that coordinate system which we will consider so we are going to take the x y z in this way x this side y upside and z this side okay so normally we are just going to follow this coordinate system now guys if we are going to talk about these components so here the v sine 45 degrees will be responsible for rotating the particle okay the charge particle will rotate due to this component of velocity which is the perpendicular component okay now if you will have a different figure given to you in which the angle will be made along with the x-axis so that will be the tangential uh, component along the x-axis or this side and the other one will become the perpendicular or the normal component so you will have to focus on it which side the angle has been taken the direction of b and v have been taken and according to that you can write the perpendicular and the tangential components easily okay so there is no such thing and in any such case like in this case when we have taken theta is equal to pi by 4 which means 45 degrees so what is the type of path particle will be following that will be helical path and what is the helical path you can see this here this is the helical path okay now the another point is this is the direction of magnetic field i have shown here this side okay the along this side so the the helical path will be or helical axis will be along the b direction that is magnetic field direction so if you are taking it in this way you are making the helical in this manner if you will take it vertically like this you will have to draw it for this axis okay so whatever will be the direction of b you have to take the helical along the same direction is it all right clear so that axis of b matters here when you are gonna draw the helical another thing is here you need to know about few more things one is pitch so what is pitch you can see distance between any two circular like loops you can see here okay consecutive paths so between them the, uh, the distance is what it is pitch so that is known as pitch and the radius r for any circle you can consider that is what that's gonna be the radius okay it's not a circle 
particularly all the things if you will include together and the complete structure you are just gonna observe it is known as helical path okay because they are connected to each other it's not a particular circle expression like circular path or uh, you can say you can't say this is circle so just to understand you can say like for one thing if you will see the radius that is r we will represent it with r as well as the distance between two consecutive okay uh, tracks that will be what that is p as i have shown it in the figure to make it more clear i'm going to show you in this way look at this i hope now it will be clear and all they will be symmetrical okay of same size and same way you just need to draw them now next point here is one important thing if you want to find the pitch so what will be the formula of pitch it will be t into t is the time period here v parallel which means the tangential component of velocity this is how you will be able to get the pitch okay i hope guys it is clear to all of you different type of trajectories different paths which particle will be following as per the uh, theta angle which is the angle between v and b and guys keep on watching this uh, like these videos in this series of magnetostatics or electromagnetic theory because we will keep on considering the important concepts one by one and if you will have any doubts anywhere at any point you can mention them in the comments we'll try to discuss those points too okay uh, like i will just try to make them clear as well so thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end now along with that i'm just quickly gonna provide you one more information and that is related to unacademy plus subscription guys if you want to prepare under the guidance of the top educators we are having on unacademy plus for your upcoming csr net physics exam preparation so in that case on unacademy plus we are going to have so many important courses going on by the top educators even in upcoming days many new courses are going to start which will be detailed courses for your upcoming exams so if you want to uh, like attend the regular sessions if you don't want to miss these important sessions then you can take the unacademy plus subscription and guys uh, you can start your preparation with the guidance of top educators by knowing about important concepts important strategies and you will be able to cover up major portion of the syllabus in very less time too all these things together will help you a lot to prepare very well for your upcoming exams as well another thing is whenever you are going to take the subscription guys you can use and apply the referral code which is anjali arora as mentioned here on the screen no space in between spelling should be same that's how you need to write it and apply it and you will get the 10% discount in the total unacademy plus subscription amount one more thing guys there we are going to have well structured and well planned courses and even let's say if somebody is taking the subscription today and there is any course which has started few few days back okay so recordings of the previous classes will be available to you and that's how you will not miss any sessions and you will be able to cover up each and every point discussed in the class too clear because the recordings will be available to you as well as in each and every course we are having the doubt clearing sessions after some number of classes so that's how even if you are watching the previous classes recordings and you are having some doubts you will be able to ask about them in the doubt clearing sessions and after taking the subscription you will be able to attend the live classes by all the top educators we are having on unacademy plus for your upcoming csir net exam preparation and i hope all these things together will help you a lot to take your preparation to a very good level thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end and uh, if you are going to take the subscription then you can use and apply the referral code which is anjali arora as mentioned here okay no space in between and you just need to write it and apply it and to take the subscription you can download the unacademy learning app select your goal that will be csr ugc net proceed further to take the unacademy plus subscription and that's how you will be able to take the subscription too subscription is available for different durations three months six months one year two years and all so you will be able to see all those details there when you will proceed to take the subscription too okay thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end thank you